In this episode, Ensign Tendi decides to replicate a dog, but it's creepy because its eyes start glowing and it starts climbing the walls. The senior bridge crew go on a mission, so the Cerritos gets a substitute captain, which Mariner hates because she doesn't want some Jellico type to take over. Jellico, you may remember, was the guy who took over as captain of the Enterprise when Picard was taken captive by Cardassians. Then Tendi's dog turns into a metal cube that rolls across the floor. Boimler asks Rutherford how he can make his hair look more promotable, but Rutherford is too consumed by trying to make a transporter go 0.7 seconds faster. Boimler volunteers to help Rutherford test it, despite the fact that he hasn't ironed out the kinks, because he thinks that will impress the new people coming onto the ship. Boimler only partially rematerializes, and of course worries that Rutherford won't be able to fix him before the new crew people arrive and they'll see him like that. Mariner is relieved to discover that the new captain is her old friend Captain Ramsey. Boimler shows up half materialized and still making the loud transporting noise, so Captain Ramsey orders him to sickbay. Dr. Ta'ana has no idea how to fix him, but Rutherford is at least able to stop him from making the transporter sound. Dr. Ta'ana arranges to send Boimler to The Farm on Endochronomus 5. It's a place for people with weird space illnesses. She's also sending Tendi's dog there. Captain Ramsey and Mariner are in the ready room exchanging gossip, so Ramsey can get a better sense of the crew. She also makes Mariner her first officer, which she agrees to, but is not pleased by. The ship from The Farm shows up and the commander is an Edosian like Arix from the animated series. Mariner tells embarrassing stories about Captain Ramsey and herself to her crew, which does not endear her to them. They beam down to a bog planet to fix a water filter for the indigenous population who look like axolotls. The filter starts to malfunction, but they can't figure out what's wrong because Mariner forgot to bring their tricorders. They clear the blockage in the filter, but everyone else is still annoyed at Mariner for being useless. When they get back to the ship, Captain Ramsey gets a briefing from Captain Freeman about her mission to maybe plant some seeds they have on the planet they went to for some reason. Ramsey asks Mariner to scan for the ship with which they were supposed to rendezvous, but she just sets off a red alert by accident instead. On the ship from the farm, Tendi and Boimler discover that it's full of folks who have all kinds of freaky conditions that Starfleet is trying to sweep under the rug. They are informed of this by a guy whose body is half accelerating in age and half reversing in age. Apparently he got infected by an alien horse bite. There's also an ensign exposed to delta radiation and in a wheelchair like Captain Pikes, and Anthony, who is one of those weird fish things that Captain Janeway and Tom Paris turned into when they flew at the speed of warp 10. Half old, half young guy tells Boimler that the ship isn't really going to the farm, and that the ship has just been wandering around for months. The Cerritos finds the Rubido, the ship with which they were supposed to rendezvous, and it's adrift. They beam over to the ship in spacesuits with magnetic boots, but Mariner has a hard time operating hers. The folks on the farm ship plan a mutiny, which Boimler is not pleased with. Also, there's this guy with nipples for eyes and eyes for nipples. I thought that was clever. Boimler plays along with the mutiny plan at first, but then rats out the mutineers to the Edosian guy. Mariner and Ramsey are wandering around the Rubido looking for crew members, but it looks pretty deserted. Mariner seems bored by the this and Captain Ramsey is annoyed by her attitude. Apparently Mariner wasn't always so cynical. They open the hatch to what looks like some kind of cargo bay and find the crew there floating around because they have no artificial gravity. The captain of the Rubido says there's something out there that she's afraid of. The Edosian guy confronts the mutineers who deny planning a mutiny, but he tells them that Boimler told him everything, even though Boimler asked him not to tell everyone that he tattled. Everyone is confined to their quarters and they all gang up on Brad. The captain of the Rubido tells Ramsey not to restore power to the ship because there's a monster or something that feeds on the ship's power. It's like that episode of The Next Generation when the Enterprise gets caught in a booby trap that feeds off of the ship's power, so to get out they have to turn most of the ship's power off. Ramsey tries to tell the rest of her crew not to restore power, but the communication is garbled, so they turn the ship back on, and the alien or whatever starts growing again. The captain of the Rubido panics, so Mariner punches her out and tells everyone to get to the bridge in the hope that they can send a distress signal. Captain Ramsey is confused as to why Mariner is competent all of a sudden, and Mariner admits that she was just pretending to be useless because she didn't want to be given a job on Ramsey's ship. The mutineers chase Boimler into an airlock and his transporter condition wears off. They try to eject him into space, but he just rolls out onto some grass because the ship actually landed on the spa planet they'd been told they were being taken to. The half-old, half-young guy apologizes for the mutiny and the Edosian guy says they should have just talked it out, which frustrates Boimler because that's what he initially suggested. Tendi leaves the dog on a dock and the dog starts talking all of a sudden and 
says goodbye to her and then levitates away. It turns out that the dog can do all this because Tendi has never seen an actual dog and assumed that these are things they could all do. Boimler gets kicked off of the spa planet for not being a freak anymore, so he and Tendi take a shuttle back to the Cerritos. Mariner is trying to get everyone off of the ship that's being eaten by an alien, but there are too many, so she asks Rutherford to use the transporter he invented that made Boimler weird. He beams everyone onto the Cerritos, and they're all transparent like Boimler was. Captain Ramsey offers Mariner a position on her ship one more time, but Mariner turns her down. Captain Ransom hits on Ramsey, and she throws him into a table. This wasn't my favorite episode of Lower Decks. I liked the dog, she was cute and funny, and I liked that they brought Adosians back, but the ship full of freaks was a bit much. It doesn't seem very Starfleety to be calling a bunch of injured people freaks. The stuff with Mariner not wanting to be given extra responsibility also seemed redundant. We get it, she doesn't want to be promoted. That's been made clear in several episodes now. Also, this episode didn't have enough Rutherford. 